so today i will talk about parity so first of all let me define a transformation so the operation of spatial inversion the operation of operation of spatial inversion of coordinates coordinates that is x y z these are the spatial coordinates if they gets inverted that means it will become x y and minus z then this transformation is an example of discrete transformation discrete transformation such that when parity operator psi it operates over r it gives us psi minus r right also if we repeat it repeat that means parity operator operates over p psi r so that means it can be written as p square psi r then if i put its value then it its value will be psi minus r from here and this will remain as it is so and if this again operates over it then r will become minus r so r become minus r so minus minus will become positive so it is this one so thus what we are getting p square psi r is nothing but it is the psi r so what we are concluding from here that square of the parity operator is always equal to 1 if i compare these two sides so this means that the value of p will be either plus or minus 1 so therefore this parity operator if it is 1 then we call it as even parity but if p is equal to minus 1 then we call it as odd parity right so let us understand it by taking an example so i am considering an example here what was the example say psi is equal to cos x then when parity operator operates over psi it gives us the cos of minus x but cos of minus x is simply cos x means it is simply psi so that means here parity is even right that is plus but if on the other hand i will take sin x means let us choose another example that psi is equal to sin x then we operate sin x with psi it gives us the sin of minus x and minus of sin sin of minus x is basically sin minus x that means minus of psi what does it mean that means parity is odd right that's what we are getting then let us talk about the uh, conditions for parity conservation conditions for parity conservation So, if S and P, if their commutator will be equal to 0 or it is the Hamiltonian its commutator with parity operator, it will also be equal to 0, then we can say that parity is conserved. Then we can say that parity is conserved but p does not 
commute with all types of h. Commute with all types of h. Particularly, for weak interaction, for weak interactions, Hamiltonian HW means the Hamiltonian of weak interaction is represented by HW does not commute with P, does not commute with P. That means HW and P their commutator is not equal to 0. Thus, we can say that thus parity is not conserved in weak process or in weak interaction right now let us talk about parity and spherical symmetrical potential let us talk about parity and spherical spherical symmetrical potential so very important thing which we have to learn so for spherical symmetrical potential for spherical symmetrical potential spherical symmetrical potential wave function is defined as wave function is defined as psi r theta phi it is chi r y l m theta and phi and it is chi r and this we have learned uh, for the problem of hydrogen atom and we have defined it as 2 L plus 1 and L minus M factorial 4 pi L plus M factorial whole under the root P L M cos of theta and e raised to power iota M phi. So in polar coordinates say x y z is basically r theta and phi and x minus x y will be minus y means spatial inversion means this. But if we talk in terms of spherical polar coordinates, then R spherical, uh, sorry, uh, spatial inversion means R will be minus R and theta will be pi minus theta and phi will be pi plus phi. Why we are taking it like this? Because say if there is, it is making an angle, say any angle alpha, then Spatial inversion means either we will talk about this angle or we will talk about this angle. So this is the meaning of it this, uh, in case of angles, spatial inversion, right? Because this angle is, this angle is, because this whole is pi, pi minus alpha and uh, this angle is, This angle is with respect to this, it is this whole angle is it is pi plus alpha. So that's why I am taking it like this. Alright. <coughs> so thus under space inversion, under 
space inversion this plm cos theta means it is plm cos of my uh, cos of pi minus theta and it is equal to plm minus cos theta and uh, this can be written as minus 1 raised to power l plus m plm cos theta similarly e raised to power iota m phi means e raised to power iota m phi plus pi and it can be written as minus 1 raised to power m e raised to power iota m phi <coughs> similarly we can talk about ylm so ylm theta phi means it is ylm pi minus theta and it is pi plus phi So it can be written as minus 1 raised to power L y L M theta and phi. So what does this if I look at this part this represents the angular part. So this suggests that that when L will be 0 2 and 4 means even means I am talking about S, D and F, G and so on. For that, this is even. This belongs to even parity. But if we talk about L is equal to 1, 3 and 5 and so on, means P, F and H and so on, means if it is odd, L is odd, then we can say that it leads to the odd parity. Thus, orbital parity, thus, orbital parity of a particle is an angular momentum state means orbital parity of a particle is an angular momentum state L is minus 1 raised to power L right so that's what we are concluding from here so this is all for today's lecture